Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? It's got 30% more power than RAV4. Are you serious? The Ford Cougar Titanium with EcoBoost technology. Welcome to this week's e-learning Bloggers Masterclass, where I'm joined by YouTube superstar Caro Ryan from Lots of Fresh Air. As a passionate blogger and YouTuber, Caro wants to empower and encourage fellow bloggers to embrace video as another way of connecting with their audiences. So today, she's going to teach us how to master the world of YouTube in order to get the most out of it. So many of us have heard that video is the future of the internet or we felt for a while that we need to make video a part of how we're sharing our messages if we want to stay relevant. Well, if you ever needed any confirmation of that, Cisco recently released a report that stated by 2017, 69% of all internet traffic will be video. So how do we go about making video a part of how we share information and tell our stories? There's two main areas I want to chat about today. Firstly, thoughts about creating great content, and secondly, making the most out of YouTube. One of the key things that makes a great blogger stand out is someone who's known for their generosity in sharing good information and doing it in an authentic way, completely connected to who they are. Their blog voice is their voice, and that honesty translates into words they write, the images they share, and the community they build around them. So it's only natural then that any video content a blogger wishes to create should be a natural extension of their blog and, to use marketing speak, should feel completely aligned to the brand they've already established with their blog and continue to give value to their readers. The truth is, no, not everyone's comfortable in front of a camera, but there are a few easy tips and tricks that can help you out. For example, understand it's not about you. It's about how you can help and give value to your readers. If you're looking right at the camera, think about just one of your readers, maybe someone you have great engagement with, and speak with them. In other words, speak with one, not one million. Now take your time. Don't rush. Work through one point at a time. And remember, it's video. You can always do it again. And you don't have to do it all in one take. That's what cutaways and editing is for. And we'll talk more about them next. Think about directing yourself. You know, in the same way we take selfies and then analyze them and take another until we're happy. Do the same with video. And finally, I use the acronym BD Blows. It stands for big deep breath, lots of energy, smile. It makes a massive difference to how you come across on camera. Now, for those of you who feel that having your face in front of the camera isn't going to work for you, the great news is that there's lots of different ways of using and incorporating video without a talking head. The best place to get ideas for this is to watch TV. Yeah, become a student of television and look at the different ways that you can use audio and visual together to share a message. When we sit down to watch TV, we tend to consume it as a whole, you know, the images, the sound and the information washing over us as a single piece. But in reality, TV and video content is actually made up of lots of different elements that all go into making it appear this way. A great place to start is looking at the news. Not so much the newsreader or talking head behind the desk, but look and listen to the way the different reporters tell their stories. It might start with them speaking to camera, but then it'll cut away from them to show images that support what they're saying. Right there are two of the foundations of video content. One, piece to camera, and two, cutaways, the visual images that tell the story. The genius is in the cutaways, and I can tell you that your best friend in making videos, if you're gonna be speaking to camera, is cutaways. They not only hide all the bloopers, the stuff ups, ums and ahs in what you had to say, but they provide visual reinforcement of the story or message that you're sharing. It's in the editing stage that you take all the best bits from your pieces to camera. You lay them out in a way that makes sense and then you cover those edit points with your cutaways. This means you don't have to get all your info out in one take. It's actually best to break it down into separate points. But there's lots of other ways of using different techniques to tell a story in an audiovisual way. And if you or your blog or brand doesn't feel connected to having your face on the screen, you can always just use your voiceover with images 
or even what's called a montage. That's simply moving cutaway images with music underneath and perhaps some titles or graphics to help tell the story. So there's a few ideas and things to think about regarding the types of video content that you could make. Now let's look at the second area, YouTube. If you've decided to use YouTube as your free video host, there's a few things that will really help you in this journey. There's lots of stories of people who make money with YouTube through AdSense advertising or maybe through product sponsorship. But did you know that there is around 48 hours of video content it's being uploaded to YouTube every minute? And the people at the pointy end financially who are making the big bucks are a really small percentage. So I recommend before you start with YouTube, go back to your roots and think about why you blog and what your readers mean to you. Do it for them, not the unrealistic dream of becoming a YouTube millionaire. That way, no one will be disappointed. It's also important to know that if you really want YouTube to be a part of your brand offering and not just simply a free video hosting service that can feed through into your blog, you need to commit time to working on your channel branding, creating playlists and the overall layout so that when people land on your channel, it feels like you, you know, it feels like a natural extension of your blog. This is actually my number one bit of advice for people jumping into YouTube, even if you only just use it as a hosting service. By creating custom thumbnails, it will ensure that when you embed your video into your blog, it's going to look a whole lot nicer than one of the three random shots that YouTube suggest. It really ups your overall look and feel in the channel and helps people find the videos that are of most interest. You could use free software like Canva, PicMonkey, or even Photoshop to help make these and ensure they are consistent. Oh, and it totally helps with driving traffic from the YouTube suggested videos on the right hand side of the screen. After adding custom thumbnails, the next tip for getting the most out of YouTube is to ensure that you always take the time to complete the text in the description section, along with adding appropriate tags. This is also a place where you can add links back to your blog or elsewhere. And just in the same way that you help build your community and engagement in your blog by responding to comments, make sure that you continue this awesome habit over in YouTube. Answer questions, give thumbs up, and even ask further questions to help build a loyal following. And even though you may not spend a lot of time in Google+, it's a good idea to set your page up there, even if you just auto post your video uploads. You might be surprised at the comments and engagement that come across from there. So show your support back by plus oneing the comments. Speaking of surprises, one of the great things about having a solid presence on YouTube is that it opens you up and exposes you to a whole new audience. I am still blown away by how different my stats are between my blog and my YouTube channel. As you can see, my blog has oh, a slight skew, 55 to 45 female in Australia. However, on the channel, it's usually around 60, 40 male from the USA. We have to realize that we're not necessarily going to convert one to the other. So in the same way, if you're going to be converting existing content from your blog into video, you might want to think about how it may need to be tweaked for the different demographic. Everybody wants a bit of extra cash, right? Well, if you decide to tick that monetization checkbox, there's a few things to think about. How do you feel when you're forced to watch an ad play out before you can watch the video? Or do you think people all understand that, you know, that's just how YouTube is and it won't make a difference to how they feel about you and your message? Think about the content of your video and if it's appropriate for having ads. Well, for example, maybe you're sharing a very personal, a deep or a heavy topic and maybe having an ad for barbecues or Ikea pop up might feel a bit jarring and create a disconnect. In terms of payments, at the moment in Australia, you have to earn around $150 before you get sent your first payment. It took me over a year of calculating I was earning approximately one cappuccino each month and then one a week and now a bit better than that before I saw the first payment. Again, it's all about managing your expectations. But who knows, maybe you've got a cat that plays the piano, you write Korean pop music, or maybe you are the next Jenna Marbles and you go viral, in which case, amazing. Now, even though it's not possible to get any email support from YouTube unless you have a massive online following already, 
the good folk at YouTube haven't left us all alone to fend and create by ourselves. Jump into the creator resources part of YouTube and you'll find a few helpful resources such as their free music library. It's a mix of both commercial tracks that come with some pretty specific usage conditions and also stock or production music of varying quality. But if you're on a budget and can't afford to license or buy music elsewhere, this may be a good place to start. More than anything, I just want to encourage you to jump in and give video a go. You know, have fun with it, experiment with the different methods, see it for the creative storytelling method that it is, and look at how you can use it to connect, to help, and to give value to people. Oh, and um, finally, just a quick smartphone filming comment. Please, whatever you do, shoot landscape. Anything else is a crime against YouTube. YouTube is a perfect fit for bloggers. The most successful YouTube channels are personality driven. People want a person they can connect with. As a blogger, when you are your brand, you're in a powerful position to harness the opportunities that YouTube offers. A great tip for enhancing your YouTube channel is to partner with someone who already has a good YouTube following. Do a guest blog or a project together and work collaboratively to get your message out to a subscriber list you wouldn't usually have access to. We hope you've enjoyed this week's segment of the Voices of 2015 eLearning Blogger Masterclass and our KidSpot social tip. A massive thank you must go to the Voices of 2015 sponsor Ford for making today's segment possible. Until next week.